If you want to talk about chords, I'm a really keyboard player. So I use Cthulhu a lot. You can find a lot of presets online. It's really, really fun. Like, uh, look at all these sick presets. Oh, I love these, these chords. The lean on chords, so nice. I remember some good ones. Such good chords. This point in your career to develop your mixing skills. I mean, mixing is always important, you know, even if you're just a producer, because we're just selling songs, right? We're, so my demo has to sound at least decent. But when it comes to like the actual for real mix that goes to radio or goes to Spotify, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not concerned about it. At this time, at this point, I'm just trying to specialize and like work on my content and, you know, just my production. Because why spend time doing, trying to learn something that, someone else can just do better so I, I know what I'm good at and it's not necessarily that no I'm obsessed completely but like it's not even like practicing it's just like I was always just cooking up stuff and trying to figure out why I couldn't get something to sound a certain way going on gear slots eventually YouTube you got to be totally obsessed and and don't don't feel bad if you need to have a job for a while a normal job because it's hard to make money at first for many years. For all, for me, again, this is all my experience. What makes you like working with an artist? Well, when it comes to a writer, I love when they use words that don't sound like they're a songwriter trying to write songs, you know? When their songs sound like a story, not just like a series of lines. You know, when like you hear songs and they're all like, you know, you did this to me and I did this, and then I go around doing that, and then you did this, because I, blah, blah, it's like all I, me, you, you know, like, it's just like, every line is just, <sniffs> Julia Michaels will write a song that's like conversational, and a story, and the way she contorts her words, and my Billie Eilish does that a lot too, like, just conversational lyrics, but they make them sound so good, and it's like so real, I love that in a writer, and when it comes to an artist, I love an artist that has some sort of identity, or like an idea of what they want to do, or a direction, like I love direction. Because it gives me something to work with. And most of the songs I do don't get cut. <laughs> Even the great Ian Kirkpatrick's music gets passed on more than placed. Absolutely. When there, if you think your songs are I guarantee you I have tenfold as many songs. I'm an expert at, at writing songs. I'm so good at it. You know what it is, man. Even if like, like I have a couple wins and that helps and obviously in your confidence and stuff. But like I'm just a better loser. You know, I'm, a, I'm good at losing. That's why I win. How about that? Some Confucius sounding I'm a real good loser. Oh, like an anchor of familiarity. Like when a listener hears a song, they'd be like, oh, I've heard this sound before. So it's a little bit of familiar. You know, when you first hear a song, you don't know whether you like it or not. So I use those little anchors of familiarity to like kind of lock in people. And then I think, this is just theory, by the way. I don't know if this actually works. And then a mix of that and then mostly just original stuff. I always want to do like, you know, something weird. I'd rather lose doing something cool than win doing something that just sounds like everyone else, you know. Everything's on spec until it's not, you know. I'll finish the production, send the song in, not hear anything for weeks, and maybe, you know, then they'll call and say, yeah, the song's going to make the record. And then they'll talk to my manager and they'll work out the deal. But everything is on, everything's on spec, always. You got to win. You just got to compete. Have you ever made the song with the ambition of it being a hit? I mean, I want every song to be a hit. But you, you kind of know after a while, you're like, well, this maybe could be something. But most of the time, I don't know. I, I just, I think I'm too close. I'm not good at that. That's something I'm not good at is being objective about my songs. Like I'm too close to them to really know. I rely on other people. For me, it's, I feel like I nailed it. And then I send it and get no response. And I'm like, Obviously, I didn't because, yeah, that shit happens all the time. You know, when Instagram first came around, photographers were really mad. They were like, this is going to ruin photography. And I always thought that was so, such a silly outlook. Like, to me, yeah, it flooded the internet with photos and people that think they're photographers. But it made the really good stuff stand out in a sea of You know, you're going to see the diamonds so it's the same way with like tracks and songwriting and stuff. And you can't just send 
in like a bunch of splice loops stacked on top of each other, then it just sounds like everything else. And that's, you know, that I, when I look, listen to all the demos people send me and stuff, I always listen for something unique. You know, if you're just copying what's out there already, it's just gonna, it's a quick no. And that goes for all the ANRs and everything. They're always looking for, you know, a little bit of familiar, but a little, you know, mostly new or like, you know, be daring and have something to bring to the table. You know, like, don't just be like, please listen. You know, it's always been my dream. No one gives a about any of that, whether it's true or not. Because if it's always been a dream, amazing, amazing. That's, that's awesome. Means nothing though. All that matters is the music. There's, there was something I read about finding a manager early on. I love how this is from some old book where they said like, you either want someone super experienced from like a big company or someone inexperienced that will work their ass off for you. Like... If you get with a big company signed as, as management, like you might be a small, the smallest kind of priority. But if you're just like find some like really hungry young dude that's like, I want to f manage sick producers, then like, you know, he'll just hustle his ass off because he's also trying to win. How does one go from just messing around to knowing Dua Lipa would fit on the track? I went to Wyoming to Emily's place with Caroline, the other songwriters. And we worked for a week on just tons of, not tons, probably did four songs. And one of them was Don't Start Now. We were aiming for Dua, you know, we were trying to figure out what to do. So we were technically messing around, but we had a purpose. But, you know, you just make tracks. And then sometimes I play stuff. I'm like, oh, this might work in a session. And I'll put it in that directory. And I'll play it depending on the artist. Or, you know, maybe I'll spend a week preparing little track ideas for artists and then go in. And, you know, that's how it goes. What do you do in a session when the artist has to be other passionate about but you don't think is good? Ooh, look at this question. How do you deal with it constructively? Well, first of all, if it's the artist and they're passionate about it, who am I to tell them? No, that's not a good idea. That's, I don't think that's a good, what a good producer, a producer's job is to just be the, you know, to take the artist's vision and make it good. So I don't really need to organize my sample folder. And this is why the media bay in um, Cubase is phenomenal. I just select the folders that I want to search in and I have a search for like, you know, percussion and, you know, it's searching through 1.5 terabytes of samples and it uses indexing. So it's super fast and, and it has ratings. So I can be like, you know, show me all my samples that I rated because I like, like to save the samples I like. So these are all my rated perk. So like for anything like a kick, these are just like sort them by duration. You know, if I want like a really quick sample by my rating, like the media bay is 40% of the reason I love Cubase.